Hey guys, Paul Guy Sai, and in this episode, we're going to talk about how you can engage students with 3D modeling and 3D printing and why it's so powerful and stupid easy. Let's go! Okay, so you've probably heard me say this before, and if it's your first time, well, you're welcome. And that is that engagement is everything, and until you have engagement, you got nothing. It doesn't matter if you cover everything you needed to cover. If you had zero engagement, who cares, right? So this is a tool called Tinkercad, and 3D printing, or maybe VR, we can tag on later on, that's going to be highly engaging for kids because they are creating, they're making, they're designing they're tinkering and this whole movement is not going to go away. In fact, it's really what our society is based on. We want kids who are going to solve problems, who are going to make things better, who are going to innovate, who aren't going to give up, who are going to be creative, right? We're going to engage math and spatial awareness and all sorts of stuff with Tinkercad. I really don't think I need to convince you to use it because you're here. So let's go ahead and jump into Tinkercad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a free account, how to create that account as a teacher to get your classroom set up to look at maybe what's out there and then to create your own sort of custom lesson activity to ship out to students, have them, you know, mess with their own designs and then you can print them or visualize them and then have a conversation about whose is better and what we like about them and just sort of iterate that process of 3D drawing and prototyping and you can engage whatever else, you know, you need to along the way. So. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So here we are at Tinkercad.com. This is free uh, for you as a teacher. So all you're going to do is you're going to go over here to the right and either sign in if you have an account or join now. So when you click join now and make sure that you start educators um, can start here, but also you're going to see where students join a class. There's a code we're going to generate. You can see where that's going to work out. So we're going to go ahead and start here. Continue to start making my educator account. Yep, I certify I'm an educator. Okay, I agree. And you can sign in with your Google account or with your email address. Now, I already have this ready to go. So I'm going to back out of here and then just sign into my account and I'll show you from a different side what that looks like. Okay, so I'm signed into my account. I'm going to go up here to where I have my profile picture and I'm just going to click this um, <clears throat> my name. Okay, and it's going to bring me into everything that I already have. But what I want to do is I want to edit that profile. So I'm going to go down to my profile right here. So if you missed this in the setup, and I know it's possible because uh, I did right here. How will you use Tinkercad? The features we need are not going to show up unless you click this. So change this and make sure it's on teacher and then hit save changes. OK, so once you've updated your profile as a teacher and you hit save, you're going to go up to the top here and you're going to click on teach. And that's where I am right now. So once you click on teach, you have some the ability to explore some lesson plans and we'll go ahead and click this now, but we need to create a class and an activity still and then get that code for students all coming up. OK, so I'm in the lesson plans area and I'm going to scroll down to science just because that's where I am as a science teacher. And I click on this and these kids that are used to using Minecraft like, wow, design a biome terrarium. So if I want to teach biomes and I want to sign this, so when it pulls it up, this is ready for grades six to eight. It's going to take eight hours, right? So you get an idea of how long um, you can send it right directly to students. You can look at a lesson plan overview. Uh, you can get to setting up your class, which we're going to do in a minute. It talks about discussions and uh, a sustainable goal, right? We can talk about all sorts of things in the biome and then talk about how we find 3D things to put into it, but also uh, how to build it. So there's your standards. All that good stuff is already there. So if you wanted to just find something shallow into the pool to get started, that's how you do it. And there are tons. So go back to lesson plans here. And if I were to go to math, I could see a bunch of different things in here that are math oriented engineering and I can sort through these however I want. Right. So one of the things that I thought was really interesting is this ability to just find something quick and get started. But to be honest, there's another way to do this. So I'm going to be working with some seventh grade students who in the past have always done this technology project where they build a car and race it. Right. And so you remember the old Pinewood Derby. Well, what I decided to do is I decided to do a balloon car derby, but because it's going to be 3D printed out of plastic, it's a plastic wood, plastic wind derby. I don't know. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to jump right into classes. Then all you need to do is you need to just create a new class. I'll do that right now. And I could name this uh, seventh grade. 
and maybe this is a STEM class or whatever. Uh, I click on the grade, so this is gonna be seventh grade. And we're gonna call this, let's just call it a science class, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and create that class. Now when I do, what's gonna happen is it's gonna give me a class code. So there's my seventh grade STEM class I just created. I click on it and there's the class code I can share with students to get them right into the class. And when I click on it, it tells me my class code's copied to the, the clipboard. So I can put that in Google Classroom, Canvas Schoology, however you communicate with your students, they simply click it and you're good. All right, now activities. <clears throat> I need to create my first activity. Pretty easy, just click the box. So to create that activity, you just need to name it and give some basic instructions, but you can add all sorts of things on here later on. And then I can put some instructions in here like I want them to customize the car for maximum acceleration. So if we're gonna 3D print these cars and then race them in the hallway, basically what I'm doing is I'm at acceleration and speed. So maybe that's the initial boundary of understanding that I have for my kids. But what I really wanna to talk to them about is <clears throat> how did that car accelerate? How long did it take? Can we graph that along the way? Um, and we're gonna get at some math and graphing physics concepts, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create activity but there's nothing in there. So I click on it now, and now I need to create a new design. This is the Tinkercad drawing that you're gonna make. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the new design. Uh, it's a 3D design, so I'm gonna click that. And it's gonna bring me up to my blank canvas here. Now the cool part is, this is something that I found on a Thingiverse where a teacher had done this with their classroom, and I'm just gonna kinda steal it. So let me show you how that works by jumping over to Thingiverse. Okay, so Thingiverse is a product of MakerBot. So this is tied to 3D printing. So I'm gonna type in balloon car up at the top, and that's gonna give me this project, these air propelled cars. You can see a bunch of them. There's another one here, there's another one over here. This is the one right here, balloon powered uh, toy car project that I wanna snag. And so by bringing this up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download an STL file, right? And then um, open it in Tinkercad and then I can just adjust it. So if I go down here and I look at, this guy has a YouTube channel on how, you know, a YouTube video on how we did all this, the starter car kit, okay? So this is a Tinkercad file. Okay, so this is the car that the teacher shared with his students for them to start with. And really there's only one part that I actually need when I tinker this. Um, and so I just stole that and put it in my own, right? This is put out there for free and for its 2021. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here just for a second because there are parts of this that we are going to need. And those are like the wheels. So if I look at the files that are in here, so if I click on this thing files, these are all the STL files that I'm going to need to 3D print. The wheel is the one that I'm going to need, but you can see there are all these really cool examples that students have built right in here on Thingiverse. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to give them a brick car like we used to do with the Pinewood Derby back in the day. You got this big block of wood and you had to do everything to it. Now there is one difference with this project that I need to do, which is I need to give them a um, an air port for the balloon to attach to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit tinker this. This is my stolen design, um, but it also has the brick. So this is pretty simple. All I did is I copied this air port, which you can see right here. That's where you wrap the balloon around. You can see that the parts that are shaded gray here are holes in the design. So this is my front um, place where the axle would go. This is the back axle. Um, and you can the kids can put these wherever they want, and then they're left with a, a brick. So the only thing that they're going to need to do at some point when they're done designing, so they're going to take this brick and maybe they use um, you know a round shape hole to cut something out of it or whatever that every time they grab something, if you're not familiar with how Tinkercad works, so let's say I want to take like a, I don't know, um, a, this dome shaped thing, and I'm gonna pull it out here uh, and just drag it around. So if I want, when I change that into a hole, and then I cut them, no, it doesn't look like anything happened until you see I just sliced a dome out of the car. So now maybe, 
this airflow underneath. There's no real reason I would want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and delete all that work. But the, the point is you can build with all these shapes. Every time you click on a shape and drag it out, it can be either a positive space shape or you're adding or you're subtracting. So we can talk about additive and subtractive design, but <clears throat> that's not the point. When we're all done, we just grab this port, we drag it in there and we spin it around to make sure that it's facing out the back that if we need to lift it up to make sure that the balloon can attach we lift it up until we got that port and we're good to go now kids can alter this if they want but it's best if they leave this main part alone so I'm giving that to them as part of the design file and then they just have whatever they need okay okay so I've got my lesson now I'm gonna go back here and you can see that in Tinkercad, I've got, I'm going to go back up here to classes. And I put this in my STEM PD class. And you can see activities. There's my plastic wind derby. If I click on it, there's my design. And basically, the kids would just get a copy of this, tinker it, and then we can have that conversation. So really simple to set up your class to find something in the teach lesson plan gallery to go over to Thingiverse maybe and to find something that you could use, steal it, import it. Hey, so if you need some tips and tricks on Tinkercad and how it works and how to get yourself started in the actual design world, check out that tutorial right up there. I've got that. Um, it also will walk you through how to get it from Tinkercad out to your 3D printer. If you need that, that's also in that video up there. Hey guys, so I hope this helps you kick some class with some engaging 3D modeling and printing activities. But I keep saying kick some class if you don't know because that's the name of my website and it is the name of my newest podcast where I'm helping teachers have a positive balance um, between work at home by engaging in activities that return your energy to you and help you go home refreshed to those that you love. So check that out on anywhere you get your podcasts and we'll see you next time.